we're back with a whole message here with Mark and Melody. We're not in the kitchen, but you know, we always go to the kitchen during this time. So what are I, we talking I'm, about? I'm today? trying to figure out my password here. Oh. Ah, I love it when you have a password and you can't remember it. And then you have to change it and then you forget that password. Yeah, and you have to have two or three or four passwords nowadays. You just can't have one. I know, I know. And then, and then they give you those little locks, you know, that or what is it like? It'll automatically tell you your password. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, if somebody steals your computer, they automatically have your password. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, or like my computer that went down this year and all my passwords were in it, so I had to take it into the shop and so they downloaded everything. So they had all my passwords. Yeah. And I cannot remember. I mean, I am just such a creature yeah. that wants to do the same thing over and over again. So I want the same password for everything. Yeah, I, I've got a couple different ones you're mm -hmm. supposed to. You know. Yes, you are. You are. Yeah, yeah. And nothing like uh, Melody One, you know, yeah. <laughs> like that. So, yeah. yeah you, got your, you got your cell phone on? Is somebody I do. texting you here? This I is, do. Yeah. I do. Hey. Welcome hey, hey. to the era of technology. I, oh, oh, I love this one. I really love fried potatoes. Are you getting the comments here? Yes, I am. How can I get crispy home fries without all the oil? Okay. Well, somebody says really, texting really do. questions. You can text your questions. You can text them to right. Melody or me anytime. And, uh, we're right on uh, the uh, air. I don't we even won't. have my cell phone with me. I'm they don't. Usually you that. don't. I mean, what's your... I I do. I kind of keep it concealed. So so Mark, how do you get that really crunchy? fried kind of taste to, uh, to uh, potatoes well, if my, you're not using the oil. My biggest solution for that is you can wash them down, pull some of the starch out of them, mm -hmm. and then you hit it with cornstarch. Cornstarch? Yeah, you kind of pat them dry and then you hit it with cornstarch and you're mm -hmm. getting a starchy coating on them. Okay. And that really helps the crispness in the oven. Um, okay. What do you got? Any suggestions for? You know, I, I do home fries all the time because I'm a potato girl. Irish here yeah. to the core and I love my potatoes so I I cut my potatoes up like fries or even if you're shredding them up I always pre-cook my potatoes when I'm making hash browns to about two-thirds done mm -hmm. and then when I shred them put them in the oven I'm not getting all that starch mark because I don't even spray my pan right. you've right. seen that I'll use either uh, a flute you know a pan that's got like grooves in it like a fluted right. uh, pan or I use the paper I'll pre-cook them uh -huh. And then let them air dry until they tighten up. Till they yes. And then shred them off. Yeah. And yeah. one good thing about uh, uh, if you're going to do it in a pan like you do, like a Teflon coated or something that, mm -hmm. um, and you don't want it to stick, mm -hmm. uh, you just don't want to do it at a screechingly hot temperature because then it just turns black and you got no browning action. It does, and you're getting all that. St if you take a raw potato and you put it in a pan. Do it at a medium heat or something. You've got to do it on a lower heat. Right. But I always suggest, even if you put it in the microwave for a few minutes and get some of that starchiness out of it, and then you can shred it or cut them mm -hmm. up, and it's a lot better. I mean, yeah. I don't use any oil in my cooking, yeah. and I love potatoes. And as far as wedges in the oven, I mean, you're going to get a crispiness out of the oven. Mm -hmm. uh, you just let them stay in there long enough, and it'll eventually... It does. Give them that browning action. I turn the heat so, up. A I crank yeah. that heat up just a little bit higher like 400, four and a quarter, do my yeah. french fries and all. And I, I cut them up in the water and then I, I drain the water off and I put my seasonings like, I, I, I mean, right. I love dill, you know, I love rosemary, garlic, onion, whatever you want or you just want them plain, you know, salt and pepper. And, well, even uh, wedges, if you've got the boiled off potatoes that are dried, yes. or leftover baked potatoes leftover and you quarter potatoes. those into wages, those will crisp up very quick. They do and um, I love them. Without any oil at all. When so. you when you put them in the oven twice, like twice baked, but they're not, man, those are good. Uh, oh, and, and then there's a psychological too, because you could actually take your wedges and uh, give it a little dusting of paprika or color, mm -hmm. which is going to make your mind think that it's cooked longer, even mm -hmm. though it isn't. So you mm -hmm. can you can manipulate yeah. it that way as you well. Can. So. You can. Yeah. Well, well, why don't we go cook some? I'm thinking some. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's do it. Cook. Let's do it. We'll be right back. We'll get in the kitchen. And... Hi, welcome to another segment of Mark and Melody in the Kitchen, where today we're going potatoes. 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 Potato extravaganza. Instead of going nuts, we're going potatoes. Yes. Yes. Oh, look at all well, the Well, they're so good varieties. for you. You know they are. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if you've read the story or heard about the man that uh, worked for the Idaho Potato Company and he was in Idaho. I don't remember if he was CFO, mm -hmm. CEO, whatever. Mr. Potato Head, I Mr. know him. <laughs> of course. They traveled all around. I used to play with him when I was a kid. Yeah. Do you know how you see the commercials where they're looking for the Idaho potato? It's this big truck like a potato. But he wanted to prove to people how complete nutrition a potato is. So for like two months, he lived on nothing but potatoes, hmm. whether they were mashed, baked, however, but he didn't add anything to it, like butter, sour cream, right. nothing. It was just this complete potatoes for two months. The ending had some sadness to complications, it. Yes, problems. Complica yeah, yeah, he did, because he reversed his type 2 diabetes. He lost oh. weight. His cholesterol <laughs> yeah, yeah. was down. He got healthy. You know. <laughs> yeah, hypertension gone. I mean, come on, let's face it. Can food do this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. So, but it, it just goes to show you everything we need is right is. here. God created such wonderful fruits and vegetables yeah. for us, and my understanding is even. After after the sin, after the garden, that's when we actually got the vegetables, when he said, mm -hmm. go and toil the earth. Yeah. For the vegetables. Yeah. And these potatoes are packed full of vitamin C, potassium, great complex carbohydrates. Exactly, and that's what you're looking for, is that's complex what you're carbs. Looking, that's exactly, and there's mm -hmm. even protein in a potato. Mm -hmm. So. How many calories in a potato? Like any a medium, potato? A medium-sized potato, like that's a little bit uh, smaller. But a good medium-sized potato has about a hundred calories and absolutely yeah. no calories from fat. Yeah. So. Yeah. And today no we're actually going to show you uh, how to cook potatoes and how to flavor them so we can get a real wow factor on the flavor mm, when it comes yes. to potatoes. Uh, there is not a bad potato. I know there's mm -hmm. some varieties we don't have here. I love the purple potatoes. Have you have you used the purple potatoes and made the uh, purple mashed potatoes? Yeah, the, the only thing I've got today is the, uh, we've got four different types of potatoes here. I've mm -hmm. got the russets, uh, of course I got the sweet potatoes. These are the reds, which actually is the red B. And okay. then the uh, Yukon Gold. Now, are the red A's much smaller? Right. They, those would be called the baby reds. And so these I'm going to give you some be... raw potatoes. Okay. And we're going to let you just start uh, setting up some raw potatoes here. And uh, now, what Mark, else do you I want? Know, what do you I want from me? Just give me some variety. I know you're not cutting this out of the middle because a lot of people think this is bad. There's yeah, nothing I, wrong with this. It's a visually unappealing, but uh, other visually than Visually impaired? Yeah. So, but other than that, you'll be fine with them. Okay, so we're just going to give you a few uh, varieties here then, huh? And okay, now some... here's what most people would do. What else do you want? Just give me potatoes. They would go in and they would start spraying all these potatoes. I'm not going to do that today. Okay. if I You know this. how I am with oil, Mark. Uh-huh. So I want to keep some. Oh, you're yeah. going to dice me some up. I am going to go over here. Oh, and then I can give you a potato halves. Here, I'll give you some potato halves. Give me some potato halves. Uh, I want that potato right there. <laughs> there we go. Interestingly enough, here's a neat thing you can do with potato halves. If you're going to put potato halves in the oven, mm -hmm. uh, if you just go and give it a little sliver, kind of create a little pocket here, mm -hmm. you can kind of fill that pocket. Sure you can. Uh, with flavors, especially if you're doing the butters and the oils, it'll actually just stay like right in that reservoir. Just like you do poultry uh, when you're cooking for the holidays, you know, mm -hmm. you put the herbs inside the neck or uh, the cavity of the turkey, mm -hmm. well here you can do it right with a potato. Yep. Okay, and you've got to season that up and give me another pan. And then I'm going How to start doing... How about if you doing... take this pan? So that's going to be our raw ones. This is raw. And then I'm going to start with our cooked ones over here. Look so what these I'm are doing all... here, Mark. Uh -huh. Look here. I'm going oh, to yeah. first splash it with some lemon. These are all cooked potatoes over here. Yeah, so all I do is, is take the potatoes, uh, boil them off, Mm -hmm. Let them air dry, mm -hmm. and then I'll refrigerate them. And then you've got potatoes that are already good to go. So we're just going to give these uh, some cuts too, and I will create while you're seasoning. We'll, we'll do the cutting, uh, and you do the seasoning. Folks, don't be afraid of putting too much seasoning on there because the potato has great flavor all in itself. Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure that we get plenty, plenty of seasoning on our potatoes. Absolutely. Now flavor. I've got rosemary and thyme that I'm putting on here right now, Mark. Mm-hmm. You've got lots of time. I'm so I've glad got you have all time. all kinds of time. Now... That's um, why she comes over all the time, because she's got all this time on her hands. Hey, there's a new store open now that's a health food store. Fresh What's time. Name? Fresh, Fresh time. time. Yes, that's a really good store. And for... I think Mark does this on purpose, so I can't get them open. 
Ugh. I'm a vegan. I have no strength. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> dill? Dill. Yes. Oh, I there love you know? dill. If I had fresh dill, I'd mm -hmm. use fresh dill, but dried is just as good. Okay, and I think I'll do a... Well, let me do a half potato. All right. We'll do one half potato here, and then I'm just going to dice this one up. We'll just do a... Because what I like to show people is the comparison between these different potatoes when you cook them. We're going to show them what the cooked potatoes look like compared to, to the, the raw. raw potatoes when you cook them in the oven. And, and the time element and all those major factors like that. So is this going to be okay for you for that comparison? I like it. Uh, the only thing I don't have here is some reds, but I've got some Yukons and things like that. Let me see what else I have here that would be really fun. Now for I'm uh, in the potatoes that you set aside with a little uh, cut out in the center. I'm putting garlic and, and mm -hmm. onion powder in those. Here's a little color if you wanted paprika. Paprika, yes. So I'll do the coloring over here. And uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, was there some? Uh, here's the red pepper you were looking for. Do you have any I celery you some salt red or celery up there? I do. But let me. And this is chili powder. Now here's a mesquite. Ooh, I'm gonna have some mesquite. That sounds really good. Yeah, I like hickory. You know, I am a Texas girl because I married a Texas man. And my Texas man loves barbecue and all this kind of crazy stuff. We both do. There's a little red pepper. That's gonna heat those up. Oh yeah, love it, love it. Yeah, and this is a really thick type of mesquite. It is, it's it's got like some body that. to it. And that, so it actually would work really good, say, on these flat potatoes when you can put some right on top and it'll kind of melt right into the potato. So that's where those are going to come in handy. I love that lemon that you're doing. Did you salt anything? Uh, you know, I did salt we could a probably little. Just, yeah, we could probably just go over the whole thing with some salt. Boom. You know, I, you know me, I don't use a lot of salt. I reverse my hypertension. I keep... We have to have some salt, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. But we don't. I think we just showed twenty different ways you can flavor Here's a, a potato. Caribbean jerk. Yeah, boom. And We've you can make em. every one of these different. If I was going to do these, I would have like here's one section, and mm -hmm. we put a little bit of the, just in one section, mm -hmm. and people are going to have this popping action. They're going to be like, "Whoa, that's different than that." In fact, here, wait, wait. Do we have some? Uh, um, here's some taco seasoning. Ooh, yeah. So we might just take a couple right here with some taco seasoning. And they're just gonna be like, you see, you're getting such a variety, they don't know what flavor is gonna hit them next. You know, so that would be a really cool thing to do. It's not just an ordinary mm -hmm. potato. Now one thing I do is, I do give them a little spray like this, just to try to hold some of the spices to it. A little hairspray, huh? <laughs> I don't need it. You know, everything's big in Texas, Mark. Have you noticed since I come back, my hair is just a little bigger. <laughs> and it looks fantastic. It even matches the color of the potatoes. So. Yes, it does. Yes. So, all right, we're going to get these in the oven. Yeah, because we've gone plum potato. Plum potato. All right, Mark, this is empty. We need to fill it. And I have potatoes to... for you. Oh, 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 These are really hot. <gasps> okay, okay. Those are the cooked. These were the raw. Mm. And uh, you can see how... These took an extra half hour to cook. But you can see how they don't have the same texture as the raw ones do. See the raw ones? Oh, right. They're steaming hot, so my, mm -hmm. my fingers can handle it. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a whole different texture. Plus, I put a little oil on them. You can brown them even more if you want, but if you don't put the oil on them, you're not going to get that browning action. Oh, wow. Mm. There's one thing wrong with these potatoes, hot. honestly. They need to be eaten <laughs> by me. <laughs> mm. you, you will never see me eat as much food as I do on a set when it has potatoes. <laughs> I, I mean, potato yeah. is probably my number one favorite food. And, and Mark. One of mine too, yeah. You know, you've lost weight, I've lost weight, I've lost a whole woman, mm -hmm. I've got some more to go. I ate a lot of potatoes losing weight. And mm -hmm. so many people say you can't eat potatoes because they're fattening. No, it's what you put on the potato right. that makes them fattening. Oh, those are really good. Which one are and those? And once again, we're gonna get all these different flavors. Yeah, I've never felt better losing something in my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
So anyway, Mesquite. Uh, the whole concept is if you boil off your potatoes and put them in the fridge, boom, you can get them mm -hmm. done in half the time. Uh, but then when you're doing these in the oven, put some different splashes of flavor on them and your guests are really gonna love it. Simple, fast, easy, and healthy. And don't invite me over unless you plan on making like five, 10 pounds of potatoes, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you have lots of potatoes when I come to your house, or none at all. Yeah. All right, perfect. All right, we perfect. done. We got more to do, but uh, there's our potatoes Let's out of the oven. Let's eat. Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, Mark Anthony here with another intelligence segment from the office desk where I uh, really, you know, I have a passion. That's, that's my whole thing is I have a passion to help you get healthy. And I have a passion to share with you what God has shared with me. Because I'll tell you what, I was living such an unhealthy life. Uh, you know, I can't believe I used to eat the way I used to eat and drink and smoke and probably do everything uh, ungodly um, uh, lifestyle in Las Vegas. I mean, you know, here in Las Vegas, I mean, there are so many all-you-can-eat buffets. And, you know, addictions are not necessarily drugs or alcohol. Uh, you know, food addictions is, is another major problem. And I was just eating the worst type of food you could ever imagine. And, and uh, so I'm real thankful. And that's, that's why I have a passion, to, to help you get healthy, too. And I still have a ways to go, um, but one step at a time, and I am taking drastic steps, uh, you know, because I want to do everything I can so that 10, 20 years from now, you're going to still be sitting out there uh, watching and saying, wow, you know, and, and I don't have many years to go, so hopefully we have time. But um, anyway, I've got a video here I got to share with you, uh, cavities and coronaries. Uh, our choice. Make a choice. And uh, this is from Dr. Um, Michael Greger over at nutritionfacts.org. He uh, has graciously allowed us to air and sends us videos. So here we go. Many of today's lifestyle medicine doctors, myself included, were greatly influenced by Nathan Pritikin. The nutrition pioneer who started reversing our disease with a plant-based diet and exercise, opening arteries without drugs and surgery, effectively curing our number one killer disease. But where did he come up with the idea? We tend to think of rural China as a place where, with a fraction of our disease rates, forgetting about Africa. Pritikin was 43 when he was told by a cardiologist that he was at great risk of death from a heart attack, so he began to live on a diet patterned after the black population of Uganda. This was a population living off plants that was essentially free from death from heart attacks. After curing his own heart disease with a plant-based diet, he went on to save the lives of thousands of others. What was the data that so convinced him? Last year, the International Journal of Epidemiology reprinted this landmark article from the 50s, that started out with a shocking statement. In the African population of Uganda, coronary heart disease is almost non-existent. Our number one cause of death almost non-existent? What were they eating? 
Plantains and sweet potatoes, other vegetables, corn, millet, pumpkins, tomatoes, and green leafy vegetables are taken by all. And they're protein almost exclusively from plant sources. And they had the cholesterol levels to prove it, uh, similar to you know, modern-day plant eaters. Apart from the effects of diet and the blood cholesterol levels, the researchers couldn't found, you know, figure out any other reasons for their freedom from heart disease. 50-year-old findings just as relevant today. They showed that dietary intake to be a key, modifiable, established, and well-recognized risk factor for heart attacks, and without needing to invoke novel, as yet undiscovered, risk factors. And this contrasts with the rather desperate search in recent decades for even newer cardiovascular risk factors. Right? But we have the only risk factor we need, cholesterol. We've had it for 50 years, and we can do something about it. According to the editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Cardiology, this year, the only risk factor required for these atherosclerotic plaques, our number one killer, is cholesterol, elevated LDL, or so-called bad cholesterol, in our blood. To drop our LDL cholesterol, we need to drop our intake of three things. Trans fat, found in junk food and animal foods, saturated fat, found mostly in animal foods, and dietary cholesterol, found exclusively in animal foods. The journal actually went back and located Dr. Shaper, now 97 years old, and asked him to personally reflect on this groundbreaking study he performed more than a half century ago. He would be cheering to think that his article actually helped, and attitudes to diet have been changing in recent years. However, to his personal surprise and disappointment, we still lack a deep commitment to the diet-heart hypothesis, and it is likely that atherosclerosis and its complications will follow us throughout the next half century. What he discovered is that heart disease may be a choice, like cavities. If you look at the teeth of people who lived over 10,000 years before the invention of the toothbrush, they pretty much had no cavities, didn't brush a day in their lives, <laughs> never flossed, no listerine, no water pick, yet no cavities. That's because candy bars hadn't been invented yet. Why do people continue to get cavities when we know they're preventable through diet? Simple, because the pleasure people derive from dessert may you know, outweigh the cost and discomfort of the dentist. And that's fine. Look, as long as people understand the consequences of their actions, as a physician, what more can I do? If you're an adult and decide the benefits outweigh the risks for you and your family, then go for it. I certainly enjoy the occasional indulgence. I've got a good dental plan. But what if instead of the plaque on your teeth, we're talking about the plaque building up in your arteries? Another disease that can be prevented by changing our diet. Then what are the consequences for you and your family? Now we're not just talking about scraping tartar. We're talking life and death. The most likely reason most of our loved ones will die is heart disease. It's still up to each of us to make our own decisions as to you know, what to eat and how to live, but we should make our choices consciously educating ourselves about the predictable consequences of our actions. Hmm. That's true, too, because most uh, people in society, in America at least, are going to die from heart disease. And it's all preventable through diet. Uh, you look at Uganda, wow, I mean hardly ever get one single case of anybody with heart disease. Um, uh, Okinawa, they live longer than any other culture on the planet. Uh, and both of them have a common characteristic with those sweet potatoes too. I'm going to have to eat more sweet potatoes. Uh, but you know, this heart disease thing is preventable, it's reversible, and you don't have to live a life that is going to be stricken uh, down sometimes in your prime uh, you know with a heart attack and heart disease and you know it's it's just not necessary 
Uh, you just have to make better choices. Make better choices on a daily basis. Make better choices when you go to the grocery store. Make better choices as to what you're going to have in your homes for your family. I don't care if your children are whining, Oh, I want this, I want that. Be an adult and have responsibility for what your family is going to eat. And let me tell you, most adults nowadays don't have the courage, they don't have the tough love that they need to have to make sure that their children eat a healthy lifestyle. They just give those children whatever those children want. And let me tell you, it is one of the stupidest, worst things you could ever do. Because your children are going to end up worse than this generation. This, this next generation, in fact, it was, there were studies out there that this is the first generation that the kids are not going to live longer than the parents because of the diet, lack of exercise, and, and who else is there to blame but the parents? You know, yeah, we're being attacked in every way, shape, and form, which means you've got to have a stronger covering over your family. You know, do not allow these unhealthy foods in your household, and then you won't have those problems. There's always things to eat. You just find something else to eat. And it's a practice. You get in the habit. You know, here's the interesting part, too. I think it was Agatha Thrash uh, uh, at Uchi Pines. They were doing studies and found out um, that the kids that were coming into the um, uh, facility there hated strawberries and grapes. Just hated them. Oh, they wanted the sugar and they wanted the candy and they wanted all these unhealthy foods. And after going on a vegan, plant-strong lifestyle for just a couple weeks, they started eating strawberries and grapes like they were candy again. And all this is because, especially at that young age, their taste buds are so susceptible to all these chemicals and everything. They're so desensitized and, and they don't know what real food really tastes like. And just after a couple weeks, they're eating those healthy foods just like they're fantastic. Uh, so, you know, show some tough love and get the healthy food in your home that your family needs so that they're not having heart disease and some of them are going to die before you do. And I'll tell you, that's probably one of the worst things you could ever possibly go through is um, having to uh, put one of your children in their grave. And, uh, but that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing every single time you put this unhealthy food on their plates. You're spooning them one more spoonful of dirt over their grave is what you're doing. You know, and, and you know, sometimes I, I have fun about this and you know, sometimes you know, I, I'm lighthearted about what we're talking about here. Uh, but then there's those times that we've got to be serious about this. And, and, you know, this is the reality. We have got to do this. And, uh, you know, the world is tough. And, uh, and sometimes you just have to use a little tough love. Uh, if you really love your children and you really love your family, do those things, whether they like it or not. You know, and otherwise the consequences, like the doctor's talking about here, uh, you got nobody to complain about. You got nobody that, that you can blame uh, when you're not doing the right steps at home. And uh, so take those steps now. Make a decision, a commitment, uh, a dedication, and, uh, and follow through every single step. It'll be a little tough for a while, but after you take those steps, you're going to look back and say the same thing I say. I can't believe I used to eat the way I used to eat. And it's just one step at a time. And sometimes with families, you got to take drastic steps. I'm not going to buy that product and have it in my home. And um, you be blessed. And uh, we'll see you next time. Well, today we're going to make some scones. But we're going to do it a little bit different because I wanted to show you some really intelligent, creative things you can do with them. Just 
boom, light bulb goes off and you're going to have a lot more fun making your scones. Now what I've got here is a couple bananas, extra ripe. Man, when they get to be that extra ripe, that's what you do. And you can squeeze them. This is like mashing them uh, ahead of time before you open this baby up. And look at that, it's already half mashed. So there you go. And uh, uh, liquid wise, I've got a couple things going on here. I've got a quarter of a cup of milk and I'm using almond milk today. And then right here, this is cream cheese. And I've got myself a half a cup of cream cheese. You can use sour cream if you want. I've got a quarter cup of butter here. And I do have some vanilla. What I did right here is I actually did a half teaspoon of vanilla, a half teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. You ever see me doing the cooking? I, I love doing those half, half, half. So um, half teaspoon of each one of those. And we're gonna get all this mashed up and incorporated and kind of smoothen it out a little bit because we want those flavors to get everywhere. One thing about scones, you're not doing a lot of mixing. And since you're not doing a lot of mixing, you don't wanna mix it up when the, the flour and everything's in there, you gotta mix your ingredients ahead of time. And you can see how that's always already, uh, just need some of those uh, mashed uh, on the, Bananas a little bit here. Okay, but that's looking really good. Flour wise, well, here's what I've got. Easy enough. Here, I'm gonna even put the brown sugar in here, like that. We can mix that in there as well. But flour wise, all I've got here is uh, two and a half cups of whole wheat, unbleached flour, and a couple teaspoons of bacon powder. So, so two and uh, two teaspoons of baking powder. We're just gonna mix that right in with the flour a little bit. I uh, don't want all that baking powder going to one spot. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, usually I don't have a problem. Uh, I'm pretty good consistency wise. Okay, that's looking pretty good for the uh, wet mixture. And look how thick it is, it's actually very thick. So, because scones is gonna be a thick batter. It's not even a batter, it's a, but it's so extremely thick. Okay, now, well, we can put our salt in here. Da, 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 and our cinnamon, da, 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 da. Guess I better do things right. Get all that mixed in there. Okay, and then we're gonna hit it with the flour. Two and a half cups. And you can use pastry flours, you can use uh, little differences when it comes to weight. Um, and you might have to adjust the flour and the liquid at any given time. And fortunately for me, I've always got some water here, I've always got some extra flour here, just in case I need to do some adjusting. Uh, a lot of times when it comes to baking, you just need to know what that texture is supposed to look like. And you can see how this is all coming together just bit by bit, and it's looking pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do right here, let me get some gloves on, if I got some. <laughs> Woo! Just because I like wearing gloves. And we'll see if we can get this baby mixed up a little bit here, just by using some glove work. Like I said, you wanna fold this nice and light. Um, don't wanna mash it too much but I just wanted to get a feel for it. And it feels pretty good. It's a little on the tacky side, uh, which is okay. I uh, might wanna add a little more flour to it, but uh, I think this will be fine. So here's the trick, here's the trick. What I'm gonna do, we're gonna cut this baby in half, because it's pretty much incorporated. Let me see, is it pretty much incorporated down the bottom there? Yeah, it's pretty much incorporated. So. We're gonna cut this in half, and I'm just gonna take half of this and put it aside and keep the other half. Okay, now comes the fun part. <laughs> With this half, I'm just gonna add some white chocolate chips to it. And I think that's gonna be enough. Okay, a few more. Just some white chocolate chips here. Okay. 
and I've got a pan that's already got the uh, parchment paper on there and sprayed. And uh, so this right here is going to be the first set of scones. Now, for the second set of scones that I set aside here, I guess I can just put that right back in the container here. We're going to do something a little different. We're going to add chocolate chips and a little bit of carob powder. So, and of course the carob powder might make it so you have to add a little water to it. That's uh, just the nature of the beast when it comes to changing and manipulating. Uh, but this was kind of moist, so I'm hoping that I'll be fine. Uh, this one's getting a little mixed a little bit more than the other one too. Uh, whoo, oh boy, that smells good actually. And uh, I think that'll work just like that. Okay. And basically what I'm doing is just giving it a little color change. You can do different food colorings. You can do lots of different things with that. Okay, I'm gonna take these gloves off. And I think I'll just spray my hands here. I got spray, good, good. Sometimes you can just spray your hands like that. And then boom, like this. So scones aren't a big expander. They don't expand a lot. They do expand, but not a lot. Um, so we're gonna just spread this out. And depending how big or small you want your scones, we're gonna pretty much go all the way to the ends here if we can. Um, and I think that's gonna be about just right there. So there we go, just like that. All expanded out. And we'll do the same thing with the uh, chocolate one here. And expand this out. See, look at how that works when you just put the oil on your hands like that. It's a neat little trick. Yes, it is. I should have been a cook. I should have learned how to cook in the kitchen. Okay. And of course, they weren't exactly the same size, but you got the idea, right? Okay. So, there's our scones. They're going to go in the oven. 400 degrees. These are cooking hot and they're going to go probably 20, 25 minutes. But one thing you want to do before you actually put them in the oven is, let me see if I can just use my little knife here. You want to cut them before they go in the oven. So we're going to, let's say we're just going to cut this in half. Okay. And let's say we're going to cut this in half right here. I'm just showing you some different ways that you can cut these babies. And we're gonna cut this in half right here. Now by theory, all you gotta do is angle cut it here, angle cut it here, and angle cut it here. And you can see how you're gonna get the illusion that this was actually cut um, from a round pie tin. Uh, but see, this is what I do commercially. Yeah, see, everybody makes their scones um, in a circle and then chop, chop, chop. And But it, commercially, this is what I do. I just lay these things out and sometimes I'll have a whole roll because I'm doing it on a big sheet pan and just boom, 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 boom. And that way, you're still going to get the same effect. And this one's even a little bit bigger, so I'm going to just kind of portion, see if I can portion this out a little bit more here and get five out of this one. Three. So I got five out of that one. And then I can just do an angle cut here, angle cut here, and angle cut here, anywhere is fine. And just like that. Okay, but that's so important to do that. Now they're gonna go in the oven, 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll show you the finished product. All right, looks like the scones are done. Woohoo, take a look at that. See the two different colors? This is something that gets uniqueness out there. One batch of scones and it looks like you did twice the work that you would normally do. And so that's what you're looking for. Now these are piping hot right out of the oven. So I should not be touching them. 
But I'm gonna break them apart here just so I can show you what they look like. There we go. Oh, they're hot. They're really hot. So, ah, whew. and I know I, I can pick these up with my hands. It just, uh, <laughs> it just is what it is. Boom. You can see the steam coming off of them. And uh, now of course you could add frostings to these. You could hit them with a, uh, ooh, um, glaze, do a little uh, uh, sugar, powdered sugar water glaze if you wanted to, uh, things like that. Man, these are hot. Uh, lots of different things you can do with these. Lots of different things you can do. But just to share with you the concept, that's all I'm doing today is I want to share with you the concept of having different, two different colors. Oh, that one broke. Looks like I get to eat that one. Two different colors on the same plate. And uh, it just gives it a little bit of a wow factor. Mm. Wow, tastes perfect too. A little flavor, I'm not gonna add anything to it because I do have the, the chocolate chips and the white chocolate chips in there, otherwise I might do a little glazing or something. But there you go fast, simple, intelligent way to make you look like a professional chef, like you went the extra mile at home, when all you did was just tweak the recipe so that it has a different visual appeal. Uh, that's it for today, and we'll see you next time in the kitchen. Hey, Mark Anthony here for another medical moment. I'm talking about the doctor of the day, and I've got a great doctor for you today. Uh, one of my favorites of all time is uh, T. Colin Campbell. And if you don't know enough about him, I'm going to give you a quick little insight about him because he is one of the best. And uh, he's actually part of the Center for Nutrition Studies. And the actual website, let me share this with you, is nutritionstudies.org. N-U-T-R-I-T-I-O-N, nutritionstudies.org. And let me tell you, T. Colin Campbell uh, is part of the Center for Nutrition Studies. And he has done so many things. It's just amazing. Uh, so just take a look at the site here. He's got a, a pretty modern looking site. It's got some style to it and everything. And uh, so I like that. Uh, up here he's got articles. He's got recipes. I'm not sure about these guys' recipes. Uh, Usually when I run into recipes, I'm finding out that they don't have much flavor. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm here for, to you know, give you recipes that have flavor. And, uh, but, uh, you know, most of these uh, recipes are probably pretty good bases to start with. Uh, as far as health, you just need to design them, blast them with a bunch of flavor and you'll be fine. Uh, he's got some courses here which are really interesting because we want to look at more of these courses. Plant-based nutrition certifications. Uh, continuing educations, enrollment, and graduates. In fact, uh, we want to send Melody Prettyman to go to this plant-based nutrition certification program. Uh, plant-based newsletters, books, videos, the China study reference, and then About Us, uh, too. And About Us, they've got a whole bunch donate, uh, uh, the board, the staff. Uh, so it's a nonprofit organization. And uh, <clears throat> I think I'll just go down here to the books. So this is, this is what I want to talk to you about is the books because I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the China study and uh, which is a fabulous book that showed the cultures and how they change health-wise based on the food that they were provided. Uh, you know, if they did have milk and dairy products, uh, man, they became unhealthy. He eliminated those animal products and the cultures became extremely healthy. And uh, so it's a very, very compelling book. Um, but here's a couple other ones for you, too. Uh, the China Study All-Star Collection. There's your recipes um, down here. Whole. Here's the book I want to talk about. Whole, right here. And I'm just starting to read this book. And, but it's got a whole bunch of information that shows you there's a huge difference between eating something that's whole and eating something that's broken down you know, in that manufacturing and processing stages. And it also talks about how scientists will break down things to say, oh, you need this, um, when you really don't. 
uh, but it, you know we need the whole message and the whole situation. And then I love this too because he's got another one called the low carb fraud. Because and I've talked about this for years, and finally people are starting to come out with some intelligent books about it. Because the whole world is stay away from carbs, stay away from carbs, and uh, that's what you need to be eating. You need to be eating more carbs. Uh, and I'm not talking about these processed carbs. I'm talking about complex carbohydrates like potatoes and rice and beans and you know your natural carbs that you get out of you know uh, fruits and vegetables and grains and you know your plant strong carbs. And uh, so between those two books, those are I haven't read this one, but I'm going to have to read that one. And of course, he's got the Starch Solution, which is Dr. McDougall's book here and the China study, Forks Over Knives. Uh, so, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, definitely a go-to person if you want to learn how to eat a healthy life and learn how to live a healthier life. Uh, uh, T. Colin Campbell, the Center for Nutrition Studies and the website nutritionstudies.org. So, uh, Mark Anthony, here to just show you another uh, validation from another doctor proving uh, that, that a plant-strong lifestyle is the healthiest lifestyle you could possibly be on. And you're going to live a longer life, you're going to live a healthier life, and you're going to live a life without all those drugs and without all those aches and pains in your older years. I mean, it is a win-win-win in every way, shape, and form to get on that plant-strong lifestyle. So, Mark Anthony, enjoy, and we will see you next time. Now, it doesn't matter what season of the year it is, one of the best things you could actually be consuming is lemons and lemonade is one of my favorite ways to make it. And let me tell you, it is so easy. By the way, I like using a lime squeezer instead of a lemon squeezer because it just seems to get more juice out of it. It just really does for some odd reason. Sometimes those lemon ones are too big and the lime one just condenses it more. So this is a real challenge. I don't know if you can do this one. Look at that, lemon. So we'll put a full lemon in there. And then I've got some stevia here. Now there's different types of stevia. We get it in big bottles like this. There's powders and drops. And this one right here, it says 100% pure, 100% natural stevia. So that one's a tree of life, 100% natural stevia. That doesn't mean it's 100% pure stevia because if you look at the ingredients, first ingredient is dextrose. Um, and so you could have 90% dextrose and 10% stevia in there. It's not 100% pure stevia. Uh, and I love the ones that say product ingredients may vary. You know, it's like they can put anything they want in it nowadays. So, but what I'm gonna do today, I've got some of this uh, vanilla stevia. And so all you got to do is put a couple of uh, scoops in there like that. These eyedroppers work really good. And then we'll just hit that baby with a, some water. And I've actually got a, a nice water purification system now, which is great. And just like that, you've got lemonade. Oh, that was so difficult. I just don't know how I'm going to be able to handle making lemonade. And, because let me tell you, lemons are the number two, number two antioxidant on the planet, right behind cranberries. You know, people used to think blueberries were the number one antioxidant on the planet. Well, they were until they actually started testing other foods. And when they started testing the tens of thousands of foods, Blueberries doesn't even make the top 10 anymore for antioxidant value. Uh, lemons is number two, cranberries is number one, but just like that, you can put a little mint in there if you want, but you've got a perfect beverage any time of the year. Mmm, and it is so good.
Just a reminder, our books are available on the website, chefmarkanthony.com. And of course, we've got my uh, Vegan Simplicity book, which is a beautiful 400-page full-color book with lots of detailed instructions uh, um, that give you concepts about how to cook. Uh, we also have uh, Melody Prettyman's uh, Simply Yummy is available, uh, Vegan Simplicity. That was the first book I did, uh, and that's a really good one. Plus, our newest one, Baby Steps to an Amazingly Healthier You. This DVD is now available on the website with four discs, 12 one-hour programs that help you take those baby steps to get healthier. So just keep taking those steps one step at a time. Uh, the website, chefmarkanthony.com is available. It's got a, quite a bit of good information, a lot of recipes right on the website. And of course you can get the books there. And we'll see you next time. You know, that was really pretty good, Mark. You know, yeah. I, I love what we do in the kitchen because I think we cook very simple. And one thing I've noticed about you, and you know, I talked to, when I was at 3ABN not long ago, I was doing some radio programs there and I talked to the Bab, uh, Mr. Bab, who's over the call center, and he said when you are in the kitchen, Mark, and you are cooking here at 3ABN, the, the call volume just goes way up. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're actually the number one highest rated program on 3ABN. We get more calls than any other yes. program and, for and, videos and books and everything. And they and everything. say because it's how simple and, and the way we explain things, especially the way you explain things. You are so comfortable in a kitchen. Yeah. I mean, you really are. I, I don't grew care. up in a kitchen. I know. I, I like don't this. care how I don't care how big it is or <laughs> how small it is. I was sucking my thumb, <laughs> whining. Well, you know, I you know, I'm the same way. Now, both of my dad dad and mom were cooks. My dad was the chef. But I just followed my dad around everywhere. And, and my dad was tricky because he, he had me help him in the kitchen for years by telling me in order to be a chef, you had to clean the dishes and dry it, put everything away and clean up after the main chef before you could actually start cooking. Yeah. So yeah. I went for years and just cleaned up after him. And now you're cleaning up after me. Yeah. <laughs> your, oh, I am. Your, your machine is vibrating here. It is. Does it vibrate and make noise and everything, huh? Yes, I've heard that dates are good substitutes for sugar, but I don't know how to use them for a sweetener. Any suggestions? Well, the best thing you can do with that is make sure that your date takes you to a nice place. <laughs> you know, I, I, I prefer maybe bowling or roller skating or something that gives you activity that's going to work off energy. Uh, uh, Mark. Mark. <laughs> what? Why not talking Come about Come on, that your, was good. I was, I was, I, we're not talking about your beautiful wife. Well, I know, but you know. You, but we're talking about dates that you cook with. I'm faster thinker than that. You yeah. Know that. He, he's, he's got his wife on his mind. Okay. <laughs> now, we're talking about dates. Now I want to go bowling. Yeah. There is a date sugar, and I like, what I do with dates is I usually take and soak them in hot water. And then I let them sit, and I put them in my food processor or my... my uh, like my Vitamix, and then I incorporate yeah. them, uh, them into my recipes. I don't use raw sugar Date at all. sugar or just blend the dates? Just blend um, the dates, That's yeah. the best way to do that. Oh, yeah. I love them. Yeah. Uh, I make cereals like a hot polenta. I, uh, mm -hmm. I love polenta. Yeah. And I'll put dates in there when it's hot and just let it set, and it really gives it a sweet uh, flavor. Yeah, and I, I think my date's the better option, though. You know, yeah, <laughs> his date probably date going is. going out to the bowling alley or roller skating rink. Yeah. Is gonna... Well, hey, you can get our email addresses. You can get our phone numbers. You can always text us anytime <laughs> yeah. you want to ask us questions. Please do. And we've started to notice since we're telling people, hey, send us in your questions, we're starting to get those questions. And yeah. We might not have the best answer, but we have good answers. Yeah. Well, I mean, really, it, we know how there, to cook with them. Bottom line is there's a million right ways to do there everything is. in the kitchen. Uh, there's these chefs, oh, no, don't do it that way. Do it this way. This is the right way. And I'm like, you know what? There's so many right ways to do things in a the kitchen. There's a thousand ways to cook potatoes, a hundred and one ways to cook eggs, technically. You know, uh, uh, and, you know, and so. not to go away from that, but just like when this uh, person asked about the dates, you know, dates are natural. So whenever you're mm. eating sugar, it's a refined product, and dates are in their natural state. And that's why dates are, are one of my favorite things to I, use as I a I still sweetener. think you need to reply to her with my, or him with my suggestion about a date. Oh, okay. It's gonna be the sweetest night of their life. Oh, so, uh, yeah. well maybe I do have a date coming in. <laughs> hey, we're gonna catch yeah. you guys on the next episode yeah. here with Mark and Melody. Thank you, yeah. thank you for tuning in. And um, you know, check out the websites, of course the YouTube channel now that is really getting a lot of popularity. Yes, yes it is. And we'll see you next time in the kitchen.